the second to last place almost immediately. Bernhardt and Marlin come to work up on Terry Labonte now. He comes down inside oh, Labonte, and we've trouble. got trouble. And Earnhardt's in it big time. Oh, we've got several, several cars. There's Sterling Marlin's dark blue car. So over in turn four, several cars involved in contact. A couple, including Earnhardt. And uh, there you see Robbie Gordon as he tries to limp back. Ah ouais, c'est Lazir qui est poussé par Eddie Cheever, Eddie Cheever qui s'en sort euh, sans une égratignure, ah et oui. ensuite il va percuter euh, Dead Jarrett, attention parce que Eddie Cheever a et pris, le, on a pris le retour de flamme de Buddy Lazir. On n'aime pas trop hein, ces contacts euh, pleines face voilà. au muret, en général bah, c'est comme ça un petit peu que, que les malheurs arrivent, on préfère euh, des voitures qui viennent taper de côté, parce que l'énergie encaissée est par le mur et puis par la voiture est beaucoup... That was the way it ended for Al Holbert and here's the way it began, remember, on lap one of the first race, going upside down, sliding on his roof. However, in both incidents, he came out without a scratch and of course, that's good news for the young race driver. So, there are two men out of it. It looks like Sneva and Holbert. One more man will be eliminated today. We'll be back. He'll bond it. They go through the whoa sideways and slamming into the wall it is Derek Bell's automobile. Bell taking a terrible hit. Still crashing and sliding. Derek Bell's car all torn up. And that is the Bell car coming to a halt. Now watch the Bell car head for the wall. 38 laps, one lap down. Remember, the caution laps are not counting. So two Bonnet the cars simply are sailing. The Bonnet's one of them. Brakes. No contact. Oh, oh there's yeah. contact. And the oh. 10 forced him off the racetrack. And then Hornish gets into the back of him. Hornish in the 06 car. What was that He's got to feel like there's a bullseye on that 08 car. And there's where he got back into Hornish. Uh, I know he got him back, but not on purpose, I don't think. He's going backwards. Yeah, I wouldn't put that in the payback department. <laughs> Harry Gant a little bit behind. As Whoa. one car, let's go. That's Fangio down on the uh, grass, and he actually... Big Al up into the wall, took a head-on shot to the wall. Whoa. And the yellow comes out. The yellow laps in the IROC do not count. It's baby Allison... the win. Allinger Jr. is third. Davy Jones is fourth. And we've got trouble with Alan Kowicki as they come to the line. Kowicki will cross the line on the grass. Which are very, very sticky, would pick up gravel, and subsequently in the race, he might have a cut, a cut tire, he might have a flat. They've been having problems, Jack told me, all week with cars going back from the pits to the garage and getting flats back there, so Bodine may be at some risk. And look at this, Bodine loses it and gets into the barrier. Jeff Bodine smacks that wall good, and he unhooks in the cockpit. As he exits Jeff Bodine's run for the $200,000. Unbelievably, for the second IROC race in a row, Steve Kinzer, king of the outlaws, has been on his lid. Good news is, wheels down this time. Yeah, excuse me, he's on the outside, and it is with Pappas. There was nowhere for Sharp to go in the OEA, and when Pappas comes back across the racetrack, he gets into the 11 car of Kinzer, starts barrel rolling down the backstretch, but fortunately lands on his wheels. 
I guarantee you right there, Larry Kinzer is saying, please get back on your wheels. Please get back on your wheels. David Pearson making a bold move up in the middle of the pack as Jody Schechter in the goal, number 16, jumps into the lead. And we've got an accident off the start. That's Bobby Allison, number four, on the wall. And Bobby Unser, number 11, bangs into the wall. And my goodness, look at Bobby Unser's Camaro. Absolutely caved in on the right side. He's trapped in the car. Bobby, that was quite a good turn, too. Didn't cost him. He never lifted. And look at Ford Day. Oh, oh, it's going to go to work. And Pruitt takes a hard shot into the wall. So does Hamilton. Racing to the flag. Because this was behind all of our leaders. The caution was waving. But the checker waves with it. As the incident happened behind the lead pass. goes around off the front bumper of Tony Stewart. He's upside down, Mike. And it's not over. Tony Stewart, the 20 car involved. Caution, of course, is out. And Stewart gets hit again. A grinding crash in the back straightaway that turns Steve Kimser over. Oh, I see right there what happened. The 06 car actually got in the back of him. Sam Hornish Jr. got in the back of uh, Stewart as well as Mark. And Mark was just a victim. And then Ryan Newman in the 12, there was just nowhere for him to go. Everything was happening so quick. But you can see right here. In the first Indy IROC race, Tommy Kendall bounced off the outside wall, turned Ari Leyendijk toward the inside. The impact was horrendous. And the springing action of the barrier shot Leyendijk back into traffic trailing sheet metal along with big chunks of the PEDS system itself. While that springing action and the trail of debris were significant shortcomings, the more important point is, Leyendijk walked away with only a concussion. He raced two weeks later. Pruitt climbs to fourth. Here we go. Bush to third. Lasowski, uh-oh, Lasowski.